Okay, hello everyone. So what we're going to do in this video is make a quick translation um, game in Scratch. So hopefully this could be used either by a teacher for their children or the children could program it themselves to develop their programming skills and also um, incorporate some of the languages uh, lessons within it. So the first thing we're going to need to do is, and it's going to be quite a simple one, I'm not going to jazz it up at all. So it's going to be a cat asking questions and then uh, the pupil can answer. So the first thing we need to do is when the green flag clicked we want the game to start. So we're going to put that in there and I want the cat to ask um, a question. It should say what is this word in English and the word will be translated into whatever language you'd like. So to do this we need to use an extension for Scratch and to find extensions, so like extra blocks that aren't usually part of the normal blocks you would get, you click on the button down the bottom left and then there is one called translation somewhere. If I can find it. Translate. If I click on that, I now have these two extra blocks and an extra category down the bottom that I can use um, as part of my uh, program. So I want the cat to ask a question and it's going to have three parts of the question. So if I want to ask a question, I need to use the ask block, which is in uh, the sensing category. I'll zoom in a bit here so we can see that a bit better. So it asks what your name, but I wanted to ask what is a certain word in English. Now, because the part in the middle of that sentence, the word we want is kind of separate to the rest of the sentence and it could change each time. I'm going to split my sentence up into three parts. I'm going to have the start, the word I want, and then the end of the sentence. So if you want to split up a string, a bit of text, we call it a string in programming, we need to use a join block. And you can see if I put this join block in here, it'll now ask apple banana. So you can see me asking apple banana. But I want it to ask what is, and then the next thing would be a certain word, and the last part would be in English. So I actually need three parts to my um, sentence there, my question. So I need to use two join blocks and I nest it inside like this. So now I've got three spaces where I can put three different things. And the first part is going to be a bit of text. What is, I'm going to put a space and a, a quotation mark opening there. I'm going to leave this part for now. And at the end, I'm going to close the quotations around the word in the middle. And I'm going to say in English. So at the moment, if I click the green flag, the cat asks, what is banana in English? And it, well, nothing will happen if I press enter because I haven't told it what to do next. So instead of just having the word banana, okay, well, actually, I'll leave it as banana for now. Um, but let's think, what would I want the answer to be? Well, I'd want it to be... Oh, wait, no. I have to translate it first, don't I? Yes. So I need to use this translate block. So in these new blocks that you've got, translate, I can use translate, pop that block in the middle part so you can see it highlighted. And now if I zoom out a tiny bit, I've got what is translate hello to Serbian at the moment in English. I'm not going to use Serbian because I'm not familiar with Serbian. We'll use uh, Welsh. I trust my Welsh more than anything else. And I'm not going to use the word hello or banana because I realise that banana in Welsh is just banana anyway. As far as I know, I think up north they might use a different word. Um, and what can I use? I'll just use dog. So now it's going to do what is the translation of dog to Welsh in English? So let's see that work. So now it asks what is key in English? So we've got a question when it's asking us a word <clears throat> and you can imagine when someone's playing the game they won't see the code they'll just see this so they have no idea um, or no hints from the code so what we're going to do then is check if their answer what they type in is correct so we need to ch if we're checking something we need an if statement but but here we want to say correct if it's true or incorrect if it's not true so 
there's two options, two different things we do depending on if it's correct or not. And because of that, we're going to need an if else block, which is this one. So it has two gaps. One for if the thing is true, if the condition is true, and the other for what if it's not true. And the condition here is if your answer is equal to a to the correct answer to dog. Okay, it's going to be exactly the same as what's written there. So I put equal sign from operators. And this just checks if one side is equal to the other. And I want to check the answer to the question. And that in Scratch is stored very handily in this answer block in sensing underneath the ask block. And I can pop that in there. And I want to check if it's the same as dog. So I can change that 50 to dog. And so it now checks, but it does nothing once it's checked. So I need to put in, what do I want to happen if it's true? So I put in, say, correct. So say is in looks, because it shows on the screen. Anything that shows on the screen will be in looks. And I can copy that by right-clicking on it, duplicating, popping that into the else, and say wrong, or not quite, something like that. So we've got a little program here that asks one question. It does the translation for us and then checks if we've got it right when we answer it. <clears throat> so what is key in English? If I type in anything that isn't dog, it says wrong. If I type in anything that is dog, that's no, anything that is dog. If I type in dog, uh, then it says correct. Okay. So. You could repeat this. If you wanted to copy all of that code, you could right click on the topmost block, which is the ask one, duplicate it, and then just place it underneath and change the word here and here. But that isn't a great way to code. But it, depending on the level of the pupils, it, it, it's a valid way of getting a nice quiz. They could just keep copying and pasting and changing the words they want. But we can improve this. Because the only thing that changes between this block of code and this block of code is the word, we don't want to have to repeat all these blocks again. Okay, we can be a bit more clever and make this a bit more efficient. So what we can do is use a variable. So I'm going to make a variable. So you can see this orange block here. And what a variable is, is it just, it's kind of like a box or a memory location in a computer, but we'll think of it as a box. And inside the box, you can store anything you want, a number, a word, okay, it could be anything. And on the front of the box is a label, and that's what the name of the variable. So I'm going to create a variable, and I'm going to name it word, because I'm going to be storing in it words. And once you've created it, you can see that it appears on the screen, because this is ticked here, you can tick it on and off. At the moment, the default is just the value zero. But what I can do is, before I ask my question, I can use the set block, change it to word. In fact, we can delete my variable if you want to get rid of that. Right click on that block and delete the my variable variable. And then oh, by default, word would be there. We can set the word to zero. So the first block after the green flag is clicked, the first thing that happens is I'm going to set the word to dog. And now instead of having three places with the word dog, where I'd have to change it three times, okay, I can now, instead of using dog here and dog here, and there's a problem, what if the kids make a mistake and it maybe accidentally add a letter when it checks, or two letters there, when it checks, if they don't put dog in as an answer, it's going to think they're wrong. So it's easy to make typos and mistakes this way. So we can instead use the word that's stored in the variable word. So I can drag this block and replace anywhere I typed in dog, apart from this one, with word. So now I set the word to dog and it asks, what is translate whatever is stored in word, which is dog, to Welsh in English. If the answer is the same as whatever is stored in word, which is dog, then say correct or wrong.
So let's try that. It does exactly the same as what we did earlier. Okay, and you can see that dog is stored in the word variable. What is key? Type in dog, correct. Now, again, if you don't do anything else, it hasn't really solved the problem of having to copy and paste. We'd have to do this as well. And then next time we just change one thing, but we change dog to maybe cat. And now you only have to change it in one place, but it's still not very efficient. What if we had a list of words and it just automatically picked one at random um, from that list? So that's what we're going to do next. And in variables, you can also see there's a block called, a button called make a list. So if I make a list, oh, sorry, I hit the mic there. Uh, a list called words. And then this list appears on your screen. So we can put in here by clicking the plus dog, we can put in cat, we can put in, I don't know, duck, house, and so on. Uh, one more cow. Okay. And now we've got a list of words. And what we want to do is make it ask us a random word from this list each time. So instead of setting the word to dog, I'm going to set it to an item, so you can see now we've got all these list blocks, the red ones. You should see item one of words. Okay, now at the moment, what's it going to do? It's going to set the word to item one of words. So if you look at the list, item one of words is dog. So it hasn't changed anything. We've just kind of done it in a different way. But we don't want it to be number one every time. So if you want it to be random, what we can do is in operators, there is this pick random function and you can drag this inside there. So instead of always being number one, now I can pick randomly between number one and 10. Problem with this is, well, we only have five things in our list. So if it picks six, seven, eight, nine or 10, it's going to get a bit confused and it won't work properly. So we could put five here. And for now, that works perfectly fine. But when you're programming, you need to think of the future. What if I change my list and I don't have five things later on? What if I add one more? What if I add horse? Why can't I get rid of that last one? Okay, now my length is six. My program now doesn't ever ask for horse. So I want this to be whatever the length of my list is. So you can see it's six. I want it to be that same number. And you can do that. So in variables again, if you scroll down to your list blocks, the red ones, you'll see there's a block called length of and the name of your list words. So I want to pick a random number between one and the length of my list words. So instead of the five there, I drop in this block. And now it's going to pick a random number between one and whatever the length of my list is. Doesn't matter what I, if I change the list, it's always going to use the length of it. So it'll pick from any of the words in that list. Okay. So now we've got it asking randomly. It's picked cow. What is buch in English? Cow. Okay, I can start it again. And this time it's picked cat. So it's picking randomly from these. What we can then do is just add in a repeat. So instead of having to press start every time, I can repeat this, uh, this bunch of blocks, um, this script even, that's <laughs> probably a better way of saying that. And I can do that either forever Okay, I could put a forever block around all of those blocks, or I could maybe repeat it a certain amount of times. Okay, it's up to you. I'll just put forever for now, so it never stops. So when the green flag is clicked, it enters this forever loop. It does all these blocks. Once it reaches the bottom, you can see it goes back to the top and it just repeats this forever. So this time it's asked me duck. If I say duck, obviously the problem with this game at the moment is 
the actual answer is always on the screen. So to hide the answers, if you go to variables, just click on these tick boxes. So that just shows if they're displaying on the screen. If I go to rid of the variable word, and if I want to get rid of the list words, I do the same thing here. And now we have a game uh, for teaching translation or for helping with learning Welsh. Okay, the pupils can choose whatever words they want and they can test themselves. It was key, it's dog. What is hoyadin? It's duck. And so on. You can add points in as well. I'm not going to do that in this video because I've done that in other Scratch videos and that's something for you guys to work out in the end. But the reason this is useful as well, this translate extension, you can easily now, this program, just change the language. And I'm not an expert in French, but that's probably the, the next best language that I know. And that's just from A-level, so not A-level, that's just from Key Stage 3 when I was in school. So I know that that is cat. And I've just changed the whole um, game there, the whole program, what it does basically, to a different language. I've got no idea, is that cow? Could be duck. Oh, it was cow. Cheval, horse, and so on. Um, so yeah, just by changing this to whatever language I want, you've created another uh, different language um, kind of activity there. And you can show the translate language if you click that, if you'd like to. Okay, so that's this video done. It's a nice little translation um, activity that you can make in Scratch. Okay, so hopefully you followed along and thanks for watching.